Well, I just spent about two hours on a live stream trying to figure out caching in Next.js, specifically 14, and I found out a bunch of different things that I had no idea what was going on. So I'm curious, as you go through these videos, let me know what of these different specific ways that Next.js caches or doesn't, did you already know or did you find out as well? Let me know in the comments. So the reason I started digging into this was because of my Deals for Devs page. This is dealsfordevs.com, the hottest deals for developers that you should go check out at dealsfordevs.com. But what would happen is I would go into my Zeta database. So I use Zeta for storing all of our data. I use this in a bunch of different applications. Uh, so I have my Deals for Devs database. I have all this information here. And what happened is we don't have a full admin dashboard yet. So we have admin dashboard and then deals. I don't have full like uh, CRUD operations for uh, the deals that people submit. So because of that, what would happen is if I needed to make a change to that conference, for example, I would go into the database, I would find that deal. And because Zeta has a UI, I would manually update that to like updated that conference or whatever that is. But then when I would come to this page, I wouldn't see if I would refresh and I would refresh, I would refresh, I would refresh. I wouldn't see that that conference had the updated title, which was super confusing. But if I then went to the details page for that conference, I would see that it was updated here. So I was super, super confused by this. And what I did, I didn't fully understand caching at the time. So I've gotten a lot better. What I did do though, is go to the homepage and I added this revalidate function or parameter which basically says that this page should only be cached for two minutes at max. So it'll cache it. And then if someone comes within the next two minutes, they'll still get a cache version. If they come after that two minutes, it will revalidate, it'll rebuild this page and then cache it for another two minutes. And this is because uh, Chris Wicks, who's been working with me kind of mentioned like, hey, this does some caching that you need to account for. Now, this is not the best way to handle this. And I'll show you a much better option later on in the video. What I've learned though, is how and why and when and where Next.js is doing the caching for the different types of pages that I have here. So quick question for you. Do you know why this individual page for this individual deal does not get cached versus the home page does get cached? Let me know in the comments and we'll go ahead and uh, dive into that right now. So what Next.js does is by default, any static route does get cached. So as I, even though this is all run on the server, this is a server component by default and I'm running this on the server and then I pass it down to things down here. Without this line here, this gets cached forever. And they do that based on a static route, which I hate this name of static route because we now are mixing this with what static pages were and any like a static route now, interestingly in the Next.js world is defined by just a regular page route. So an example of that is at the root of this, under the root of the app directory in Next.js 14, I have this page component. It's not a dynamic route in the sense that it doesn't have, if we look inside of deals, a dynamic route like this, which is referencing the ID of a given deal. With me? So static page, because it doesn't have a dynamic route. So the difference between these two pages is this is a static route. So it gets cached and it stays cached until you tell it not to be. You can do that with the revalidate thing. I'm going to fix this and find a better way that I'll show you in a minute. In a second, I, you don't want to do that because this is basically not caching this at all when it could be, there's a better way to do this. I'll show you that in a second. But if I go to the deals page, because this is a dynamic route, because we have this dynamic param denoted by these brackets, uh, category pages, same thing, but ID here. Because of that, this is not cached at all and it's gonna be loaded on the server every time. Now, interestingly, in Next.js, you can also fix that to be able to statically cache those pages by referencing uh, or using, this is something I'll make an update to, using generate static params. With that, it's similar to how you built static pages with Next.js 12 and before, with get static props where you're defining all of the routes for that dynamic route. So all the individual routes for that dynamic route, you define those. And then based on that, it's going to generate those pages at build time and cache them. And my assumption is I still have to test this. So don't, don't take my word from it is ISR incremental static regeneration will work so that as I add a new deal, it will automatically build that page as a user navigates to it and then we'll cache that after the fact. That's my assumption. But I do know 
if you call this at build time, it will statically build all of those pages under that dynamic route. But now these are static pages. All right, still with me? So I did have an interesting thing, and this is something for you to know. If you ever wanna know which of your pages is actually built statically or dynamically, and there's something interesting that you'll see in here, you can run a build of your site locally, and it will actually show you for each individual page that it built, you'll see static or dynamic. So we'll pause and let this finish, then I'll show you the results. And there is a couple in here that you may not have expected that I didn't expect at all, that I have since learned why they are the way they are, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, while that's building, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is daily.dev, one of my favorite companies in the world. Now, I consume a ton of content to stay up to date to create the YouTube videos that you see here. I watch videos, listen to podcasts, and read a ton of articles, a lot of which I find on daily.dev. So this is my homepage on daily.dev where I can see a bunch of different articles on different topics that are interesting to me based on preferences that I have input for myself. Now you can search in here by things like tags of JavaScript. This is something I do very often. And had I spent a little bit of time to look up Next.js caching, I could have found a few resources in here to solve all the time that I spent trying to figure that out on my own. Now, one last thing I wanna show you is the ability to bookmark items so that you can come back and check those out later, which is really, really nice. Now, the last thing I'll say is daily.dev is the only website that I allow notifications inside of my browser because I love it that much. So if you're looking for an easy way to stay up to date with the latest content in the industry, JavaScript, Next.js, et cetera, check out daily.dev at daily.dev. All right, cool, so that just finished. So the key thing is at the bottom of this, you have uh, a, an O or a circle and an F. O or circle is static. It's pre-rendered as static content. Uh, F is dynamic. So if we go back through and kind of talk about what we've been looking at, the home page is static. Good, that's what we expected. Let's jump down. The slash deals page, static. All right, what we expected. This dynamic route for that includes ID is dynamic. Have I been saying this right? So static, and ca static and cached, then this one is dynamic and not cached. So this is always server rendered. It's always going to make a request to the server. And then we have a bunch of pages that are also static. Then we have a dynamic route, which as you'd expect is dynamic, but there are a couple of different things that stand out. One, all API endpoints are dynamic. That totally makes sense. They are not cached. And then we have these random routes, confirm and preferences that are not dynamic routes, but are somehow not statically built and cached. Now the reason is, and I'll, I'll, let me actually pull this up. Let's open the subscriber and the confirm. And our initial thought when we were debugging this is because it's under this group layout, which group layout shouldn't make any difference, but we, we just didn't know why these two were having that problem. So I'm gonna scroll down to a little bit of code and see if you can figure out why this thing is not being cached and is considered a dynamic route of some sort. Pause, go. Let me know in the comments, did you get it? All right, so if we come back, I think I've got a Next.js documentation page open somewhere that I really liked. Okay, I had to dig to find this. This is in the API's chart on the documentation for caching. And if we scroll down, you can see there's a couple options in here that opt out of what is called full route cache. So there's a couple different ways that Next.js is doing caching. There is router cache, which is on the client. So as you go from one page to another, and on that first page, you query data, you go away, you come back. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't query that data again. It actually takes that data from the cache. And then you have full route cache, which is what I've been talking about for full individual pages or routes. And if you scroll down, if you access anything in the headers or the search params or cookies, you're automatically opted out of caching. Now this makes total sense when you break it down because if you reference some, something in search params, that page is probably gonna be based on that. That makes total sense, but that's so subtle. Like you have to dig all the way down here to find this out. So I had these pages that were rendering as or not being statically built. And I was like, I don't know why this is happening and had to really dig down and actually kind of experiment to figure out why that was happening. And here it is. So going through this documentation and going through this chart, one, that's a lot to, to do, but maybe it's essential to figure out exactly when and where things are happening. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is all of the admin routes. So under admin, 
Uh, under admin, all of these were considered, uh, how do they even phrase this? Is it dynamic? Yeah, just dynamic pages. So server rendered on demand. Now the reason or the interesting thing about this is if we go to the layout for admin, we're wrapping all of this stuff with the clerk provider. And there's two things or one question and then one answer I'll give you. One, in the documentation for clerk and using the clerk provider for authentication, we don't use use client. Typically, if you're using like a provider in context API, you have to have use client. This doesn't have it. I'm assuming clerk provider actually uses use client anyway, like behind, like behind the scenes, it uses it and we don't even know it. So we don't have to add it, but I feel like that's something that would be worth knowing. And then what we found is inside of the clerk provider, if you go into the source code, they're actually referencing header information, which then makes all of these routes under admin. Let's see, under admin, all these routes are dynamic. So there's this incredible mix of uh, statically built pages, even though they're using server components, which those two things combined don't really make sense and I feel like are overlooked. So you need to know about that. And then you have these kind of other intricate details of why you might have things that are opting out of caching and statically built pages as well. Now, the one last thing, or actually two things I'm going to show you of ways to handle this. The last one will be better and more efficient than the first one I'll show you. The first one is uh, to create an API endpoint called revalidate. And inside of here, you can call the revalidate path with whatever path you send it. So in this case, I went to like local host and then API, API revalidate, and then pass in a path like slash deals or slash, and then also pass in a secret so that other people can't just call this without actually matching up secrets. And that you can, you can specifically manually say revalidate this page. So that is one option. I kind of have this now as a fail safe in case I need to manually go and do this, I can. And then notice up here, we're checking this revalidate secret to make sure again that people can't just add this wherever they want. So that's good. Now, the, uh, the other thing, and this is much better, is what we're going to implement is to be able to call revalidate path. So we just saw that, but revalidate path in a different place. So revalidate path, what we want to do is anytime we're in the admin dashboard, so admin slash dashboard slash deals, and we see these lists of deals, anytime I approve one of these, I want that to show on the slash deals page. So we would do a revalidation on slash deals to then have it pull the latest information after this thing is approved. So that's one thing. The other thing is, Inside of this dashboard, we're going to build like a full CRUD dashboard. So anytime we make updates to one of these deals, whether we make it featured or we change the title or the image, anytime we do any of that, we also then want to make sure we go and revalidate the path that it might be displayed on. So if we then make it featured to where it's going to be featured on this homepage, we then need to re revalidate this homepage as well as the deals page. So all this stuff has the most recent information. So that is like two hours of digging and searching and trying and figuring out into like 10 or 15 minutes, whatever this recording is of Next.js caching. And there's much more to this. I only talked about full page or full route caching. We didn't really talk about the client side routing uh, caching. And we didn't talk about data caching if you're using a fetch API because they do some things there. So there's a lot more to dig into, but I think it was really fun to dig into it. And I've had a lot of fun working on uh, this deals for devs project. So again, this is built with Next.js 14. We'll upgrade to 15. It's built with Clerk for authentication. We're using Zeta as a database. Again, I think Zeta is super cool. It's got a UI built in uh, that I can go and do things if I need to. Also, we're using Prisma with it to directly integrate with what is a Postgres database, which is what Zeta is. And then Zeta also has a feature to, uh, to if I do search in here, Zeta also has uh, search APIs to actually handle search for us behind the scenes to pull up relevant. Oh, this is still, is that still wrong? Now I'll have to fix that. But anyway, all of this search stuff is just powered by Zeta. Like they just do all that stuff for us and we just call the API. So it's super cool as well. And then we're using Sentry for error tracking and alerting to be able to make sure that hopefully you have a good experience. So do me a favor, let me know what your thoughts are on caching in the comments below. Check out deals for devs. If you have additional deals that you know of, that you've seen somewhere, go ahead and submit it. If you have something you want to submit for yourself, a course or whatever, submit it. Uh, give me any feedback if you have any in the comments below as well. 
Anyways, I hope this helps you on your journey in Next.js and caching. It's a mess. There's a lot. We'll figure it out together and we'll get there. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.